Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the bill. To the bill. Colleagues, I rise today in opposition to Senate Bill 616, although it's a hard act to follow. Rep. Sanchez, thank you. As I may have mentioned before, my life's work is dedicated to improving the health and safety of Oregon's youth and their families, both as a pediatrician and as a legislator. Well, colleagues, Senate Bill 616 has the potential to harm our kids' health and safety, and here's why. Increasing the quantity of the easiest possible access to alcohol, that is direct home delivery of cases of beer and hard cider, leads to increased consumption, right? I mean, there's no question. Isn't that why the industry wants to ship more and more of their product directly to consumers? Senate Bill 618 will make it as easy as hitting a button on your phone to receive 120 cans or bottles of beer or hard cider up from the current status quo 48 on your doorstep every single month. Furthermore, as we've alluded to, we can already receive the low friction delivery of 60 bottles of wine every month, thanks to a bill this chamber passed in 2021. We know that Oregon has a serious alcohol addiction problem. About one out of eight Oregonians aged 12 and older have an alcohol use disorder, the fifth highest rate in the US. Excessive alcohol use is the third leading cause of preventable death in Oregon behind tobacco use, and it cost the state almost $5 billion in 2019. On average, six people die every day in Oregon from alcohol-related causes, and this is mostly due to the long-term effects of alcohol, including liver and heart disease, as well as cancer. And of course, the death rate is also increased by the tragic effects of drunk driving. But let me talk about youth and alcohol. In Oregon, over 20% of youth aged 12 to 20 reported drinking alcohol within this last month. And if we parse this number, it rises to 40% for those 18 to 20 years old. And these youth, they drink in quantity, what we call binge drinking, consuming five or more drinks at a time. Of course, we know that those under 21 cannot legally buy alcohol, so where do they get it? Well, with fake IDs, through older friends and siblings, and they grab it from home. The kids know where the alcohol is kept, and they can easily access it. Alcohol exposure during adolescence can have long-lasting effects and may interfere with normal brain functioning during adulthood. This brain disruption impacts school, it impacts memory, and mental health. It triggers or it exacerbates depression and suicidal ideation. I see it in my exam rooms. And then there are the dangers, the risk taking, including drunk driving, and the ER visits. I'm sad to say that I regularly read ER reports of patients in our clinic who are brought in with alcohol poisoning. Furthermore, there is ample evidence that the early initiation of alcohol use is a risk factor for the development of later alcohol-related problems. It's why we as pediatricians work so hard to delay the initiation of alcohol use among our patients. In short, underage drinking is not something we want to encourage. In fact, we need to put more barriers between youth and alcohol, not fewer. On a topic I could talk about for about an hour, which I won't, the evidence is clear. No amount of alcohol is safe when it comes to our health. All that red glass of red wine at night, it, it's not true. It's not good for your health. And look, I'm not advocating for prohibition, far from it, but I'd rather not facilitate a glide path for more and more alcohol being delivered to one's doorstep where we're not exactly sure how that alcohol gets distributed. We're in a public health crisis, and the ramifications are even higher for our youth. It's one we should seek to mitigate and certainly not be facilitating. For these reasons, for the health and safety of Oregon's youth, I urge a no vote on Senate Bill 616. Thank you.